Hey everyone, I'm John Lin, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And we're here at the Chime Conference and our guests are Ray Lowe, SVP and CIO at Altamed, and Bill Lebowski, Vice President of Strategic Client Services at HC Tech. Welcome guys. Oh, thank you. Excited for this discussion. I mean, Altamed just achieved the epic gold star level nine milestone. So I want to dive into some of that and that journey. But before we go there, why don't, why don't you kick us off? Tell us a little bit about yourself and Altamed. Sure. So my name is Ray Lowe. I'm the uh, Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer at Altamed. I've been there almost six years. So actually, I've led a holistic digital transformation at Altamed. Um, Altamed is a large uh, provider system. We have over 400 providers and serve over 500,000 lives. We're primarily a Medicaid provider. And at our core, we are community health centers, we're FQHCs, um, and we also have PACE programs, to programs for elderly, and we also have uh, a health plan. We have a Resurgent oh, really? Knox King in the Medicaid space, as well as a managed services organization doing claims and also over a million people. Amazing work. Uh, one of the best FQHCs that I know. Thank you. <laughs> That's Thank awesome. You. Uh, Bill, tell us a little bit about, about yourself and HC Tech. Certainly. I'm Bill Lekowski. Uh, been with HC Tech for a little over half a year. Uh, former CIO. So most all my career was in the uh, CIO healthcare provider side. <laughs> HC Tech is 100% healthcare IT focused. And we're really there to, uh, to be an extension and a partner to our, uh, our healthcare cl our customers and partners. And we provide a number of managed services. We also do a lot of uh, consulting and, and uh, also some uh, staff augmentation and support. And, and we're really there to, uh, to really be as seamless as we can to support our customers from an IT standpoint. Awesome. Well, Ray, maybe you could kick us off. Like, talk to us about, you know, prior to earning level nine with Epic and their gold star uh, rankings. Where was Altamed rated? And, and talk to us sure. about the improvements that needed to be made. Yeah, so, um, so the gold star program, if, if the audience is familiar, that's how Epic actually grades you on how effectively you're using Epic, how many of the features you've turned on. There's also volume numbers as well. So it's, it's an interesting, complex um, algorithm that Epic has really rate your usability and correct usage of the product mm -hmm. around there. So uh, we went live in August of 2019, and uh, fortunately we've been at eight stars every year. Um, this year we actually made it to nine, and there was a lot of concerted effort working with both our analyst team with, from HC Tech, as well as our clinical informatics teams, making sure we're really focusing in on what were those additional feature functions that would benefit what we're doing in terms of our care at Altamed. So, I mean, we didn't necessarily want to just turn things on. If you turn things on without value, <laughs> what's the point, right? Yeah, so you really need a certification for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you really want to make sure that, you know, what you're turning on in terms of the clinical practice is appropriate. And so um, we actually found out we were um, gold stars nine about two weeks before we went to the conference in August. Wow. So we were pretty excited to, to rec receive that little designation. That's interesting. You know, I, I think, you know, I feel like the gold star was Judy's reaction that many people weren't using the features that they created. <laughs> so I think it's a fascinating program. You know, Bill, maybe you could chime in. What's been your experience with other organizations that aspire to receive either this type of recognition or, or many of the other, you know, MRAM levels, Chime has the most wired, et cetera? Well, I can tell you from the organization where I was CIO, we also were striving to advance the gold stars. And it's really not just to meet that measure. It's really for the benefit of utilizing what we have in front of us and are we taking advantage of it? And uh, it's not easy. I mean, starting out at eight stars was actually really good. Uh, it's a, uh, a small percentage of in, all the Epic customers out there. There's only somewhere around 10 to 13% or even at the nine, I think it is. And uh, striving for the 10, we were able to measure ourselves with targeting to get higher levels there but also the willingness of our providers and our stakeholders to work with us to adjust and, and modify so we all take advantage of the benefits. Hmm. Ray, talk to us more about how you approached kind of reaching this level nine size. You talked about working with HC Tech and their, sure. their experts, but was this a strategic priority for your organization? And how do you balance kind of all the competing priorities there? Well, um, you being community health centers and when you go to Epic, um, I really want to make sure that we can show that providers and the Medicaid market can be excellent. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really part of my core. Um, 
a lot of very large brand systems receive a lot of the credit and the, and the glory. And, and so kind of my personal passion is that we want to show that you can have quality care, you can have really good usage, really good tools, et cetera, in a Medicaid environment. So again, in Medicaid, we're talking about folks that are low income, poorly educated, um, and our particular patient population is primarily Latino, non-English speaking, mm -hmm. uh, and multi-ethnic, many 200% below the poverty level. Wow. So when you look at how do you create that care and usage of that, with that added complexity, looking to provide the culture sensitive care, and then still come out of the top, uh, I think it, it was quite an accomplishment. We were, we were just over the moon that we received that recognition um, this last year. That is a balance. I've heard that from other organizations that are like, yeah, we can have the best app in the world, but our population can't use it. Right, that's <laughs> correct. Right. I imagine you have similar. So, so in the uh, in the underserved market, right, there's um, a lot of usage, right, of my chart. Everybody wants to use my chart as your primary patient portal to communicate. But you know, the question is, how do you do that so it's culturally sensitive, mm -hmm. so that people can understand it, that it is presented in the proper language, so they can get educated. Um, you know, in the Medicaid market, in addition, you know, providing excellent care. Right? There's so many social determinants of health features that have to be addressed. I and mean, there's, there's a lot of food insecurity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's cheaper to get. Um, chips and a Coke than it is to buy a bottle of water. And oftentimes when we look at how do we use some of the other tools inside of Epic on the SDOH side or integrate those other third party applications, right, it continues and contributes right, to turning on what S Epic calls you know, certain features, but we actually have to validate those and roll those out. Yeah, Probably, yeah, that's awesome. Bill, what, what's the HC Tech's perspective on how you assisted Ray and the team in, in reaching this goal? Well, we're, we're really there as an extension. We are part of their team, right? And so we're there to also be there for their mission and for their purpose. And we're working in, you know, totally together. We're strategically following their lead and we're there to bring the best expertise we can, challenging our people to meet those goals and to to keep on reaching for those goals. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we're reaching for a 10 and we're, we're in, in beyond that, but I think, uh, uh, being an extension of the team is really our goal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, the process that we use, um, so we have a, r a very rich clinical informatics team, which fortunately is part of my IT organization, which, which is really wonderful. My physician partner is Dr. Eric Lee. And so we actually have um, four providers that work with us. In addition, we have a pharmacist, we have nursing leaders and other ones. So as we look at what is the workflow or what needs to be developed in Epic, um, those clinical leaders really define the what and the how, and then they work with the analysts in terms of having it delivered. And we look to validate, right, in terms of make sure that it is properly functioning. So it's a very good symbiotic type of relationship. So we get the, you know, the proper outcome we deliver this other products. Yeah, that's impressive. What do you think was maybe the hardest part of becoming Epic Gold Stars Level 9? I mean, you talked about the culturally competent care, which is <laughs> you know, doing those with that. I think that's a challenge in its own. You know, what, what do you think was the hard and kind of what made it challenging? Yeah, there's a lot of passion that goes you know, beyond you need to really be excellent and, and push for more and, and rally the team and we can do it, we can make it. You know, um, we have a weekly meeting, we're reviewing the progress. You know, of what and where, and we look at, okay, if you do that one or that one, what is happening? Can we achieve it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm not going to say charge the hill if it's not achievable mm -hmm. in there. So, you know, we really have a very kind of balanced approach, but but I push really hard, right? We push really hard so that we can maximize right, what we're coming out. Um, I think uh, on him's eight, you don't get a plaque, right? Oh, uh, okay. At him's nine, you get a plaque. <laughs> and at him's 10, you get a trophy. Uh -huh. um, I think you might almost get a banner too, but you know, we're really happy to get that plaque uh, again at the last UGM. <laughs> it's amazing what recognition like that does for a team though, right? Like, I mean, your team yeah. is excited to- Celebrate it, yeah. Celebrate yeah. what you achieved. Yeah, it's great for the team to be able to come together and have a common goal. You know. As you look forward, what is it going to take for Altamed to, to really maintain this high level of, of clinical excellence and being able to deliver innovation, which, you know, I see it as innovation. If you're able to use right. the product at its fullest level, it's a type of innovation in your organization. But, you know, what is it going to take to be able, you know, what's interesting with this STARS is you have to maintain it and increase it to get to the, right. you know, to get you your trophy. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with August of next year sure. holds for us. But, um, we're, we're extremely innovative at, Alt at Ultimate, and Epic knows that. And they, they look at us uh, in terms of our patient population, how we deliver things. I mean, things that we're doing that we're, we've been first in a number of areas for Epic. Um, 
we just went live with Chronicles Claims Loaders. And we're, we have such a focus on value-based care in the Medicaid space. Sure. Yeah, and everything is kind of fee-for-service. And you go, can you really do value-based care in the Medicaid space? But we're looking at the analytics through the keto and caboodle, and then I'm bringing in institutional and specialty provider claims. They're actually able to associate with that care in the facilities to so actually do risk stratification. Mm-hmm. And let me say, who is a patient population that is likely, one of our goals is to be admitted into the ED. You okay. know, and um, so we actually have put these programs together, right, that look at that. So it kind of improves the overall value and quality. And the other part of it, that gives, gives us more of the data and the analytics side of it. But then we look also at the AI areas that Epic has and when they're doing a Nebula and Cosmos. Uh, they we're really focusing, okay, does that work? Does that not work? for us, you know, and they work very collaboratively with uh, Samit and, and Seth and the other folks at Epic to really kind of hone in. So I, I think we're kind of special, um, you know, the Epic corporate, you know, they're part of our team. Uh, AC Tech is part of a team. We kind of connect the whole front and the back together, you know, and it, it's really kind of the outcome that the uh, some of the parts has been in the whole, right? And, and, and it's proven over and over again, you know, that ability of, of things. So we keep keep pushing, right? Keep moving ahead, keep doing the upgrades. Um, we just live with Hyperdrive, wow. uh, based on October 31st, and uh, that's gone well for us. You know, we've seen improved performance. We've seen and uh, actually better. <coughs> responses from our front office so they can do easier search functions etc so you know we're we're real excited right on the partnership across the board yeah it's never done but it takes the right partners to to make it happen bill what would you add as some keys for cios a former cio yourself to have success like ultimate is having what do you think is the key there well i think i think ray stated really well it's it's really the combination of your partners so it's first and foremost you're all focused on your mission your patients I love the fact that you have a very engaged clinical informatics team with clinicians are actually there. This is their system and they're there to really help direct and guide and 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 uh, and they're innovative in in doing that. Uh, So that's that's very key because then we as a as a collective IT team for all parties, we can be there to build it, to implement it, to support it, to execute it and to uh, utilize it. It's interesting, you know, I think so many of us in healthcare, uh, you look at it and you're like, oh, you know, sometimes they see vendors as, you know, in different ways. And I'm like, your vendors are key to your success because no one's doing it alone. <laughs> right. We're all rowing in the boat. The question is, are we rowing the boat in the right, in the same direction? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, there, there's two ways to look at it, right? There, there's vendors or partners, right? There's value added resellers, you know, where's the value add? Where's the partnership? How are we all you working together? And, and, you know, it's scattered, right? In terms of how different companies will work with you. But when you have that really good synergi- synergistic goal on focusing on what the outcome, mm-hmm. you know, is, um, and that's kind of where the magic happens, right? Yeah. And I think for us to get to uh, him stage level nine, some of that magic happened, you know? I I haven't decided if we're gonna push for 10, you know? I'd like us to get 10, I'd like us to be him stage level seven next year as well. So, you know, we want to, again, want to be um, really a showcase that shows that a Medicaid provider can indeed provide outstanding care in a socially disadvantaged environment. Yeah. And really, you know, work on health equity and, and you know, providing culture competent care. Sure. Well, I think you just told us the key. It's all about understanding the outcome so you can both strive towards it. Right. Awesome. Yeah, right. Well, thanks, Bill. Thanks, Ray. I appreciate you taking yeah, time yeah. to talk with us and share your insights and perspectives. And thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting application. Thanks, guys. Thanks, John. Thanks. Thank you.